Anthony Davis. He's like a seven foot guard. Davis. His first step is probably the quickest I've seen. You ever seen a pickup game where there's like a high school kid, and everybody else is 12? It makes me like a midget, man. He's a freak. Warman's running. Love. <laughs> 50 for him is, you know, all right, good game, but now uh, move to the next one. What's up, guys? Mike here, and today we are talking about the man who has absolutely dominated the NBA so far, Anthony Davis. And yes, this video is why Anthony Davis is not human. Now, I know I'm going to get some comments down below saying, oh, Anthony Davis is human. Mike, he might have a unibrow. He might have grown eight inches when he was a junior in high school. He might have rocked rec specs that made him not look like a human, but he's not actually an alien. And to that, I say, when a commentator says a player is on fire? Are they actually on fire? Yes? Well, that's awkward. All right, and before we get into this video, guys, I just want to say please stick around until the end. Dollar Shave Club was nice enough to sponsor this video, and they have a pretty sick deal for you guys. And so I hope you wait until the end. I hope you hear what I have to say about Dollar Shave Club because it's sponsors like them that allow me to put in 100% of my effort in these videos, and they're really important to the success of this channel. So if you want to support, make sure to check it out. Other than that, hope you enjoy the video. Number five, and then he grew. I never thought I was going to the NBA. Anthony Davis. The story of Anthony Davis begins in the fall of 2009, where AD was just another high school player with a dream. His dream was to play in the NBA, to rise to the level of his heroes, Tracy McGrady and Allen Iverson. But starting his junior year, Davis was a six foot three guard for Perspectives Charter School, a school that held 200 students and did not own their own basketball gym. As for Anthony Davis, he was just another 16 year old recruit who was deemed a mid-major player at best. In fact, Anthony would end his junior junior year of high school with just one Division I scholarship offer, as Cleveland State was the only D1 program to show him real interest. But then, something very strange happened. The first sign that perhaps Anthony Davis was not human. Because he grew and grew and grew. By the summer of 2010, AD stood at 6 foot 10, somehow growing 7 inches in just a single basketball season. Which made no sense, because no one in his family was close to the giant that Anthony Davis had become. But the basketball gods had other plans for AD, and he would make them proud. In the summer of 2010, Anthony Davis took the summer circuits by storm, going from an unranked prospect to the number one overall recruit in his class seemingly overnight. Growing up as a guard, Davis suddenly found the game of basketball easy at his new height. He was an explosive athlete who could put the ball on the floor and blow by defenders, or step back and knock down a three with a hand in his face. And once he began to develop a post game and honed his shot blocking skills, he became simply unfair as a high school center. This showed in his senior season, where he went on to average 32 points, 22 rebounds, and seven blocks a game. In insane numbers that had coaches out of their minds about his future potential. Yes, in exactly one year, Anthony Davis went from a kid with one scholarship offer to a kid that was recruited by every single school in the country. In the end, he ended up signing with Kentucky, where our story continues. Number four the Grand Slam. I'll tell you exactly what Anthony Davis is. He's a young Bill Russell, and Russell was by far, and will always be, the most valuable player ever in sport. Bob Knight, former college coaching legend. Headed into the 2012 college basketball season, Anthony Davis was all anyone could talk about. Before he had ever played in an actual college basketball game, he was a preseason All-American for ESPN, was the number one projected pick in the draft, and had Dick Vitale talking about the possibility of an Anthony Davis Grand Slam, which meant Vitell thought Davis had the chance to win the National Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Freshman of the Year, and go first in the draft in the same season. Now, throughout the course of history, this tremendous amount of hype has shattered many top recruits, leaving the whispers of their potential back in their high school glory days. But Anthony Davis would prove that he was not just another player, because in his single season with the Wildcats, Davis more than lived up to his preseason hype, proving to be a man among boys at the college level. And here, for the second time in his life so far, is where Anthony Davis proved he was not, dare I say, human. Because not only did he live up to this hype, he also somehow developed his game in a way few thought possible. Despite the fact that up until last year, he was a guard and was now playing center at one of the game's highest levels, Anthony Davis turned into an absolute monster. In his first game with Kentucky, AD scored 23 points, grabbed 10 boards, and finished with 5 blocks to let the nation know he had arrived. This would be the first of many elite performances, and when it was all said and done, Anthony Davis finished his only college season averaging 14.2 points, 10.4 rebounds, and 4.7 blocks a game. He was 
a consensus first team All-American. He was the AP Player of the Year. He won the Naismith Award. He was the NABC's Defensive Player of the Year. And the accolades went on and on. Oh, and by the way, playing on a team that started three freshmen and two sophomores, Anthony Davis managed to lead the Wildcats to a 38-2 record and a 2012 National Championship victory. John Calipari's first. And in the National Championship game, he proved just how valuable he is on the court. Against Kansas, AB shot just one for 10, but left the court with everyone pointing to him as the game's most valuable player. Sure, he had an off night shooting the ball, but he also became the only player in NCAA tournament history to finish a game with six points, 16 rebounds, five assists, six blocks, and three steals. He was named the Final Four's most outstanding player, and as if a ring wasn't enough, he also set the NCAA freshman record for blocks in a season in the championship game. And as Anthony Davis left the court for Kentucky for the last time, former Kentucky coach Tubby Smith said it best, remarking he might be the best player to ever play at Kentucky. Number three, historic numbers. In my 16 years, I've never seen anyone like him, Dirk Nowitzki. Our story continues in the summer of 2012, where AD got ready to take things to the next level. Yes, he was a national champion. Yes, he was selected with the first overall pick in the draft. Yes, he was the only player on the 2012 USA gold medal team who had never stepped foot on an NBA court. But none of that really mattered once Anthony Davis began his NBA career. Now in his first season, at just 19 years old, AD did have flashes of greatness, but he also struggled a little too. Still, he averaged a respectable 13.5 points per game, 8.2 rebounds per game, and 1.8 blocks per game, and finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting. Many expected him to become a future all-star, maybe even a future superstar, but no one expected him to take the leap so soon. Because in just his second season, AD tremendously improved his numbers to the tune of 20.8 points, 10 point rebounds, 1.3 steals, and 2.8 blocks a night. And according to basketballreference.com, when looking at every player 20 years old or younger in basketball history, Anthony Davis is the only player to ever put up these numbers. In fact, if we lower his numbers by 25%, we still end up with only two players to ever put up these numbers, Anthony Davis and Chris Webber. Adding onto this, 80s 26.5 PER at the age of 20 is the highest at that age in NBA history, and only LeBron James put up a PER over 25 at that young of an age. But still, many NBA legends such as Tim Duncan did not even join the NBA until the age of 21 or older, as the one and done trend is still new to the NBA. So let's take a look at 80s next two seasons, where between the ages of 21 and 22, he averaged 24.3 points, 10.3 rebounds, 1.4 steals, and 2.5 blocks a game. And oh, look, again, he is the only player to ever put up these type of numbers at that young of an age. And if we lower these numbers by 25% again, we still end up with only three players, Anthony Davis and Hall of Famers Hakeem Olajuwon and Bob McAdoo. On top of this, 80s 30.8 PER at the age of 21 is the highest PER of any player before the age of 23 and ranks 18th in the history of the NBA. And wrapping this all up, let's take a look at 80s per 100 possession numbers between his second and fourth years in the league. Remember, per 100 numbers nullify pace and show just how much a player would produce in 100 possessions of a basketball game. In these three seasons, 80 put up per 100 numbers of 33.4 points, 14.7 rebounds, two steals, and 3.8 blocks. And he is the only player to put up a minimum of these numbers between their second and fourth seasons. And still, if we take away steals completely, the part of 80's game that sets him apart from other historically dominant big men, only Shaquille O'Neal joins AD on this list. Which means that in terms of raw numbers, PER, and per 100 possessions, Anthony Davis has put up an absolutely historic career so far. So if you're waiting for me to reference how these numbers make Anthony Davis not human, well, the answer should be pretty obvious. But yet, heading into this season, all we heard is that Cat is the future of the NBA. Well, Anthony Davis has something to say about that. Because number two, I'll be waiting. He's an athletic Pau Gasol. That's the best way I can put it. He can be one of the greatest power forwards who has ever played. Kobe Bryant. Now, we'll get to the new Anthony Davis and Carl Anthony Towns rivalry in a minute. Because right now, we're talking about trash talk. Now, as a young player in the NBA, you need to expect trash talk from the older vets. They see you as a young kid who hasn't proven himself yet, and they're going to go at you. And how a young player reacts to this trash talk can be the difference between him growing into a future star or shrinking 
under the pressure. In the case of Anthony Davis, he lives to shut down anyone who attempts to step up to him. Like in the case of Chris Bosh, who jawed with AD in December of last year. AD laughed it off and proceeded to light Bosh up for 29 points, 15 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 steals, and 3 blocks. And we can't forget the time where the entire 2015 Warriors team disrespected the Pelicans in a game in April. As AD put it, they came out and said it was going to be a scrimmage game. We kind of took that personal. And sure, the Warriors would go on to win the 2015 NBA championship, but they weren't going to get the best of AD tonight. Fueled by the obvious disrespect, AD erupted for 29 points, 10 boards, 2 steals, 4 blocks, and sunk 2 free throws with 9 seconds left to ice the game. Which is exactly the kind of mindset you want to look for in a future NBA star. You need someone who can take it and give it back with even more force. And to be clear, as AD comes into his own in this league, it seems that he will slowly begin to become the player who will initiate the talk. The signs were there early, as before his rookie season, AD was asked about Kobe in an interview with Dan Patrick. AD said, A lot of guys can't stop Kobe. If I stop, I want to be one of them guys that say, shut Kobe down. <laughs> to which Dan Patrick said, Be careful what you ask for, Anthony. He listens to the show, and he's got a great memory here. Which prompted this response. <laughs> I'll be waiting. Months later, in his first game against Kobe, AD proceeded to score 18 points and grab two steals in just 22 minutes, proving already that he could back up his own trash talk. But to be clear, AD does consider Kobe a mentor, which is perfect. We can only hope that Kobe's legendary trash talking habits rub off on Davis. And indeed, AD has already made headlines after he scored a tough shot over Giannis Antetokounmpo. Running back down the court, AD told Giannis, you can't guard me, young fella, which proceeded to melt Giannis's brain as he questioned questioned why a man who was barely a year older than him was calling him young felt. But in the end, AD did score 43 points, grab 10 rebounds, dish out 6 assists, and had 2 blocks on Giannis and the Bucks. So his confidence was more than warranted. And we still haven't mentioned Cat, which brings us to number 1, the NBA's next great rivalry. Our goal is not to just help guys get in the league. Our goal would be to say, hey, half the NBA All-Stars started with us, John Calipari. The seeds for the next great NBA rivalry were planted very, very early. In the summer of 2012, Anthony Davis was fresh off a national championship with Kentucky and was playing for Team USA, a Team USA squad that would find themselves with a warm-up game against a Dominican Republic team that would feature a 16-year-old Carl Anthony Towns. Yes, in their first ever meeting, AD chipped in seven points in two blocks for the United States in a 105-62 victory. But Cat, who had just played his freshman season in high school, impressed everyone with 10 solid minutes off the bench. And thus, a rivalry was born. Now, the two are friends, but that doesn't mean they don't want to kill each other on the court. The talk would begin early, as Davis remembers a phone call he received from Kentucky assistant coach Kenny Payne, in which AD recalls, I forgot what he said, but I remember him calling me because Carl was talking some crap while he was still at Kentucky. And as Cat went on to dominate in his only season with Kentucky, Payne recalls that for over two months, even during the season, Anthony would call me at least three times a week saying, I can't wait to play against Carl. I'm going to demolish him, which is absolutely perfect as Anthony Davis and Carl Anthony Towns are the two big men who are currently leading a revolution of the entire NBA. Both are able to do things that centers have never been able to do before. They are able to defend every position on the court, lead fast breaks, find their teammates with absolute dimes and step back and knock down shots from long range while still providing their teams with post defense, rebounding, and shot blocking. The two were born to be rivals, and already, people are talking. Just this summer, the annual NBA GM survey set off a firestorm of controversy. As Carl Anthony Towns finished as the top choice for the question, if you were starting a franchise today and could sign any player in the NBA, who would it be? Anthony Davis did not even finish in the top three. A travesty, as last year he was named the top choice in the same poll by an overwhelming margin. And it appears the reason for this is that Anthony Davis has recently been given the title of an injury-plagued player. Just listen as just a few days ago, Jeff Van Gundy says, Who wouldn't you trade for Carl Anthony Towns? Well, Anthony Davis, I think they would just because of health. Carl Anthony Towns is that good. Of course, AD proceeded to shut him up almost immediately. Can't deliver, Davis does! Which is fitting, because while AD has never played in more than 68 games in a season, he's also never played in less than 61. It's not like the man is missing whole seasons. If anything, you could point to the fact that he has to literally carry the Pelicans' disgusting roster all by himself. And sure, Towns is younger, but if 
we're going to look at the two right now, AD is obviously better than Cat at this point. In the only three matchups of their career so far, Davis has outplayed Towns in every game. Looking at the combined stats in those three games, AD has more than doubled Cat's points, had far less turnovers, and shot the ball at a much higher percentage. And so far this season, AD began the year with the first 50 point, 15 rebound, 5 assist, and 5 steal performance in NBA history, and is putting up 31.6 points, 11 rebounds, 1.8 steals, and 2.8 blocks a game, which do I even need to say, are stats that no one has matched in the history of the NBA. He's putting up per 100 numbers of 41.3 points, 14.4 rebounds, 2.3 steals, and 3.7 blocks. Numbers again that have never been matched and are so high that if you lowered them by 25% would still leave us with only 6 other players in NBA history on that list, each of which is a Hall of Famer or will be. And his PER is currently sitting at 32.6, which if he were to end the season with that number would be the highest PER in NBA history. So while Cat may be great, while he may one day rise to the level of Anthony Davis or maybe even surpass him, he's not there yet. He's not even close because no one is. Right now, Anthony Davis is doing things on a basketball court that have never been done before. And with all this said, I want to just leave you guys with this. This is the only segment in the video where I can see that there is not actual proof that Anthony Davis is not human because this part of Anthony Davis's career hasn't been written yet. It's been said that heroes get remembered, but legends never die. And right now, Anthony Davis is on track to become an NBA legend. Someone that goes beyond a human, someone whose name will never die. Whether he'll actually live up to this, we still have to see. I think he will though. And that wraps up today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed already, it's a basketball channel. I make basketball content like this. Basically, if you love basketball, I think you'll love to subscribe and I'd love to have you. And with that said, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this cool deal from Dollar Shave Club. So let's check it out. Like I said before, guys, Dollar Shave Club is sponsoring this video and I'm really happy to work with them because they're actually an awesome company. I swear, I actually signed up for their service like eight to 10 months ago, way before they ever reached out to me because they solve a problem that everyone has. Like a young Mike, you probably use disposable razors and those razors are expensive. They run out. They cause razor burn. The list of problems goes on and on, which is why Dollar Shave Club is just so awesome. They deliver high quality blades to your door every single month and it's cheaper than actually going out to a store and buying them. So you get a better quality blade and it's cheaper and you don't have to leave the house. Everything here is a positive. On top of that, Dollar Shave Club gave me an exclusive link to share with you guys. If you click the Dollar Shave Club link in my description or just go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Mike K, you can choose any razor, any razor they have and get it for just $1. Now, I would tell you there's no catch, there's no commitment, you can cancel anytime you want, which is all true, but I really don't have to say that because you're not gonna cancel. Seriously, Dollar Shave Club is amazing. And on top of their razors, they have a bunch of other products. Yes, they have a bunch of things for shaving, such as shaving butter, which is like shaving cream, but better. And recently, they're unveiling a new line of stuff. We've got conditioner, we've got body cleanser, we've got soap, we've got a bunch of stuff, and I've been using it recently, and I smell amazing. I'm just saying. So guys, make sure to go click the link in my description, or go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Mike K, go sign up for Dollar Shave Club for just $1, and you're not gonna regret it. Trust me, this is coming from me. Dollar Shave Club is awesome.